Take two, guys. Back on the GT40 race program. You can see I did some work to our guide balls. Put a nice boat tail on that. It is aimed towards our plug. But as you can see from the angle of our liquid, they don't line up. So I think we're going to wind up straightening that out. As you can see by the roof, the roof of that bowl is not nearly as wide as I would like to have made it. I really have to check casting thickness before I go any further. We do have a little blue on the other side of the guide. We do have an interesting blue swath going right down the center of the cylinder wall. As far as our chamber, it looks like it took a step back. As far as our bore, that looks like it took a step back. I'm not really happy with that at all. So we're going to take that uh, boat tail and we're going to straighten that out and see if we can get back what we got, what we need. Okay, from this view, you can see what angle that guide needs to take in order for it to really work. And our valve blue looks like it took a step back as well. So we got some flow gains by putting a more aerodynamic vein in it or boat tail, but we lost, we lost some of our, our liquid control. So it's only a partial win. So we need to uh, recoup that and then uh, take a look. The, uh, the throat ratio is still relatively tight. As a matter of fact, throat ratio on the last cut, which was the second, was 85.6 on the intake and 83.5 on the exhaust. Now, it may be tough to see, but because I left some extra meat between the guide bosses, that gives us an offset throat on both of these. And you have to average uh, the top, top to bottom and then side to side numbers to get your throat ratio. Okay, as of right now, you can still see a lot of that short side is not even completely done. It's still really has the uh, the stock curve to it except for going you know to the, the size valve that it needs but it's still relatively straight let's do a see if I can find a piece of solder and show you that okay now on one hand you can still see it it could use quite a bit of a layback you have to be careful there's not a ton of metal on that short side that I can really whack it back and uh, gain a bunch of top end flow if we take a look, let's see, one on the left is our cut three. This is our second cut. Basically, what did I do? I worked on the outside walls of the ports. Well, how did we do? And I also put that boat tail on. I should mark that. Okay, second cut, third cut. Plus, 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 plus. Some of them are small, okay? But I'll take a plus where I can get a plus. Remember, we got minuses, like two cuts in here. So we got a decent pickup there. I've got a nice pickup there. Decent, decent. Now, remember, these aren't super important to me because it's going to be a high RPM setup. I'd rather see some big gains in here. So that's telling me because we're losing it after 500, it's going to get more than a 500 lift cam, I'm sure. So we need to get that short side happening in the higher lift ranges. I am going to have to do some work on that short side for these, which these will take a bit of a hit. I'm sure of it. How did we do as far as swirl? Well, we got a minus, 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 plus, 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 minus, plus, plus. Now, I remember I put that guide in, that boat tail, angled a little bit, figuring it'll it'll do something with our swirl. We were a little we we're a little shy right in this area with swirl. This was fine. 
In fact, if this could be a little bit lower, that would have been even better. So I did work on that. That was a failure. We're going to move on. Okay, second cut exhaust, third cut exhaust. All we wound up doing was worked on the cylinder wall side of that port. Okay, it's already a big port. So you want to do what you can do and not make it bigger than it is in reality. Okay, we definitely have problems keeping the air on the bottom of the the port according to that short side because that they dropped the bottom of that port so much. So how did we do? Well, we got pluses almost everywhere except for the very, very top. Are they big pluses? Nice Baxter, he's barking at somebody. Okay, we got decent decent plus here. A little bit, a little bit more. Almost the same. A touch more. Just inching up on it very slowly. We went from 201.4 with a pipe to 206.4. Still not where I want it, but it does have a thick, a very tight throat still. Of course, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. How big do I want to make the throat versus how thick do I want to make the casting so it doesn't crack? So I'm, like as always, I'm going to inch up on it. Okay, second cut air speeds versus third cut air speeds. Plus, plus, plus. We're moving a little more air at 600. We were 226.2. And now we're at 231. So not a huge difference, but enough to, to see it on our air speeds. Okay, now I did the boat tail and so forth. Look at the pickup I got from 133 to 172. Huge, okay? Now, this was fast, this was slow. I worked on that uh, much closer than they were. Okay, so <clears throat> that wall stayed the same. The other wall picked up quite a bit. All right, take a look at our short side. It was pretty good, okay? Plus, plus, minus. We actually have more of a discrepancy across the short side than we had. Okay, so that needs to be worked on. So really, we have to balance. We have to try to balance these a little better. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change that guide because I don't like the way the liquid looks. And then we are going to have to work on the layback on that short side and the width of that short side. As of right now, that short side is not a lot wider. But I do have to go through all of them and measure the the thickness of the casting and how far I can go on them. Let's take a look at the exhausts. Okay, second cut air speeds on the exhaust. Uh, this is at 600, this is 181. And at 600, this is 183. They're almost identical. How do we do? Minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. It's very low. It actually lost a little bit in the center there. Plus, plus, minus. We got a nice pickup here. Right here, we got a nice pickup. Side to side, not as good as it was here. Side to side, side to side, pretty close. Either way, that way. This side really took a dump. But that, that's got that lump on the bottom of that floor. Let's look at that. Okay, so I'm putting my pito right in that corner. And uh, obviously it's not getting good airspeed. I wonder if I put my pito on top of that. Would that give me a better representation? Give me, uh, give me some feedback on that, guys. Oh, I should mention that I did a little flow ball. Actually, I did a flow ball action on it, but it didn't really change. At 0.55 lift, we go 243. Now, on stand sight, the best I've seen that somebody got out of these heads was 245. So I'm right there. They also did it with a bigger valve. They did it with a 194. This, head, this set of heads is not getting bigger valves. They're getting the stock original sized valves. 
So I need to make it happen with the valve sizes that I have, and I need to do it without making a huge port. It's only going to be 292 cubic inch, and it's going to spin to the moon. So we got to get it done. And we uh, haven't even looked at the intake manifold yet. But we're almost where I figured we could get this. I was figuring around 250. That's still going to be that's still going to be a challenge. And uh, somebody was asking about the horsepower of this, and I asked the owner, and uh, he's like, it was originally like 306 horsepower. So they made a 375 horsepower later version, I think. I don't know the exact history of the GT40s, but they're they're super interesting. I wish I knew more. Please uh, talk it up in the uh, in the comments, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.